Well, friends, patrons, can't believe I'm saying this. Seriously. We have arrived at our first patron only podcast. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. You are all awesome. Let's see if I can remember your names off the top of my head. We've got George. We've got Andy. We've got Fung, the OG. And then we've got Taylor, our top tier Taylor. Oh my God. You rainbow foily human soul right there. Seriously. Um, all of you will be getting a little gift from us, regardless of the raffles, uh, just for being our first patrons. And we're going to do the raffles at the end of the month. That way, anyone who signs up can be part of it. But for you guys, like you said, we're going to send you all something small because you're our first. You're the you're the four pillars that have made this thing possible. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we thought we would kind of give you guys a behind the scene deck tech, something that we weren't planning to do on the show because we're just going through gameplay there. And tell you what our intentions were, what we're building, and maybe each week, if you guys want, we'll give you a little update to what type of spell book we have, what we're crafting, and what we're trying to do, how we want to kill the other brother. Um, but before that, Fung, we wanted to talk about the Obnoxious Nine, because you had mentioned that to us. And the Booster Guides have blessed my brother and given him all Obnoxious Nine. I know. Obnoxious, right? Yes. yes. <clears throat> As I said before, I've I have a certain blood pact with them that I'll eventually have to uh, deal with. This is why I get so many hits. But um, yeah, one of the things we want to do here on the show is answer any questions you guys have about cards, gameplay, mechanics, whatever, TCGs, video games, anime, whatever. Anything. Oh yeah, that's true. That's a total option, guys. We're gonna go around MetaZoo, and then maybe we'll start putting some other TCGs in there as we, you know, get them like we got a Korra coming. Um, we've got D spirits coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a number of TCGs. And if you guys would like, we could try them out privately on the Patreon before they go over to the main channel. Yeah. Basically show you guys some of the buried shows, like the behind the scenes as we learn. Mm -hmm. uh, but most important, we want to learn with you guys. So if you have questions, like he said, tell us, because it's just going to help us put us on the yep. spot, make sure that we're, you know, following the rules. And if there's anything that you don't understand, we will try to clarify that for you. Like today, the obnoxious nine, the power nine, basically the reflection of magic's power nine, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are they really that powerful? I think so. It depends on the card, of course. But if you look at all these cards carefully, they're all insane in their own ways. Okay. So like Uncle Sam, there's one per spell book. But if there's a American flag around, he essentially gains fleet and trap. So he enters awakened and you can contract him as a trap. And then he deals 20 times the amount of American citizens in the game. Wow. Let me just read him real quick. Beastie humanoid Uncle Sam. Five neutral, 90 health, one per spell book, date of birth 1775, USA, 92.5 kilograms, height 2.2 meters. This beastie enters the arena awakened and gains trap. That's trap? The shield yep. with the slashes is trap yep. and gains trap when contracted if there is an American flag with an eyesight. Mm hmm. So it can be a trap if there's an American flag with an eyesight. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. So um, let me finish reading the card, then break it down. Liberty Smash 20x. Liberty Smash's damage is equal to 20x the number of American citizens casters. American citizen casters in the game. Uncle Sam is an important member of the crew that delivers Metazoo's mail. Thank you for letting me interrupt you. I just wanted it's to read fine. It it's fine. You interrupted down. me to say exactly what I just said. But okay. um, yeah, Sorry. Uncle Sam, he enters Awakened and you can contract him as a trap. So once you pay the cost, if there's an American flag around, you can decide then, do I want to bring him out just as Uncle Sam or do I want to slide him under another card as a trap? Um, and then, yeah, 20x the amount of American citizens in the game. This is a multiplayer game. So the more players you have, the more powerful he's going to be. But which we're only is talking wild. like probably 40, right? Well, in a two-player game, yeah, 40. Yeah, which is the majority. I mean, that's how sure. we're doing it. The question is, let me read the card again. Okay. See, Sam Sinclair is an American citizen, right? Oh, no way. Uncle is Sam a is an American citizen, <gasps> right? Wait a second. Is Am that right? really what's going on? Am I right? Cards can trigger other cards' fourth wall wait, effects. It, Liberty Smash is a fourth wall effect, which means that any American citizen in the game is going to make him stronger. Are beastie citizens? No, they need passports. So, but Sam, Sam, Sam is a is a caster. Uncle Sam and the Sam. Mm -hmm. Well, Uncle Sam, I would assume. I mean, he's a beastie humanoid, so he's probably an American citizen because he, he has, is Uncle it's Sam. Seventeen seventy five. He's the one who got the first passport. So really, what we're going to need um, to figure out is who are all the American citizens in wow. MetaZoo? Because That's... as these cards come out, it's going to change gameplay. 
Never even considered that. All right, let's move on to the next one. Chessy. Chessy. You mind, um, if I, mind if I read it before you break it down since you just happen to have all these memorized, Mr. Men, as well? Go for it. It'll help me learn. Chessy. Of course. Four per spell book, one neutral, three water, 80 life, a Terra effect island, 50 bonus attack. Date of birth, 1936, Chesapeake Bay, 1.7 tons, 30.2 meters. When Chessie enters the arena, bookmark a page from the top of your spell book, Drowning Kelp Attack 10, Earth. Drowning Kelp gains plus 10 damage for every other water page in the arena. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. After being compared to a pair of mutant eels and overfed sea otters, Chessie has taken a very hard look at itself. God, yeah. that's a good look. Now, if I'm not mistaken here, this is something I will have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Um, water aura pages are water pages as well as water creatures. So if you're playing Chessy in a deck, all of your auras are going to boost Drowning Kelp as well as all your creatures. Yeah, it's a page. It's um, all pages. You're always bookmarking a page. You're right. Yeah, exactly. Wow, um, man. The other thing to think about is that Chessy, you're allowed to have four per spell book. So they're doing it to each other. Yeah. A lot of these um, obnoxious nines are only one per spell book. I wouldn't say a lot, but a number of them, like Power Up Reds, one per spell book. Ghost Train, one per spell book. Growth, one per spell book. The other ones, they start to change the amounts. Death Uncle so Sam, good. one per spell book. Oh, Phoenix Rain is two. Oh, boy. Okay. Two per spell book. Uh, our next one the caster himself. The so, man. Sam Sinclair. I think this is a um, underpowered card right now. Caster Sam Sinclair, one per spellbook, has fleet four uh, light. Light. 90 health. Terra effect if it's sunny outside. It's daytime. Date of birth, August 12, 2012. Point. Wow. He's not that old. Yeah, that's right. Of course. Eight years old and then 12 years old. And now we met the 16 year old version. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Um, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, 93 kilograms, 1.9 meters. While Sam Sinclair is in the arena, any page with Sam in its name may be contracted without paying its cost. It's aura cost. Power investigate. Choose one of the following effects. Reveal face down trap page and then return it to its original position do not resolve its effects okay so you can just peek a trap Mm. so you know what's coming Mm -hmm. reveal a page uh, second power of investigation number two reveal a page of your choice in target casters chapter and then shuffle the chosen page into their spell book oh wow you get to see their hand Mm -hmm. and then just remove a card and it's gone back into the spell book Mm -hmm. holy shot 40 dark okay it's interesting that sam is using dark Yes. That's almost like a little foreshadowing mm-hmm. about what is to come because we know Adam Arkham or yeah, Arkham. No, Arkham. It's something else. Artem, Ar- whatever. You know, Adam's kind of dark because he's been ma- manipulating that jackalope in front of the kids and he's been encouraging Sam, Sam, just step it up, man. Like you got the power too. But Sam is holding back for some reason. Sam only recently decided to train to battle the dark beasties. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It says it in the flavor text, Mm -hmm. but his potential is known to be truly remarkable. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we see why he's powerful. Maybe not as powerful, in my opinion, as Uncle Sam. Well, Uncle Sam comes out for for free. free. Yeah. So they're a team. They're definitely supposed to be in the arena at the same time, giving each other benefits, helping each other come out. Another reason I think that M in the story is Uncle Sam. Merlin. Um, And Merlin. Yes. Yes. So Sam Sinclair, though, this, I want to stay on him for a second. Oh, yeah, please. Um, light decks aren't really playable right now. If you guys are trying to build a light deck, you're going to be like, uh, what? What? Uh, I have Menahune. He boosts my artifacts. I got Sam and I got his like imp devices and yeah. his little things, but it's not really like a killer. Uh, the most powerful thing Sam has right now is the fact that other Sams come out for free, which is cool. But think about the fact that as they release more sets, not only is the light aura meta going to get more powerful but we're only going to get more and more sams we're going to get more sam sinclairs more uncle sams more walking sams sinkhole sam oh wow sinkhole sam comes out for free good yep. call there's going to yep. be so many sams that benefit from this mechanic right this is the start of something so what sam sinclair is going to allow you to do is build really powerful multicolor aura decks where you bring him out and then you bring your other sams out for free yeah yeah, it's pretty awesome. Right. <clears throat> okay, next one. Probably one of the most popular cards. The Silver Bullet. 
I mean, love the hollow on that. Look at that. That's Beautiful. So gorgeous. Silver bullet artifact, 10 per spell book, one cosmic. Uh, cosmic. Nope. Uh, light. Light. Sorry. Light aura. Just said it. You can only contract this artifact if you control a non dark beastie. You may fatigue and place silver bullet into the afterlife to choose an effect. One. Place target dark beastie or spirit beastie into the afterlife. Just instant kill. Or two, fatigue target beastie. Just get out of your way. Do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Made after the veil was put in place, these silver bullets are said to be made by a truly powerful caster with a major wolf problem. That makes sense. Silver bullets, <laughs> werewolves. I can't wait. Are we getting a werewolf in nightfall? We have to be, right? Must, if, they're, right? if they're flavoring us, warning us of a wolf problem, we've got werewolves coming. Dude, it's got the runes on it. Do you see that? Mm hmm. I wonder if that's actually like some Viking shit or something real or is it just pretend? Looks pretty they cool. They do look like real runes, but I don't know what the runes mean. Probably I've just seen those shapes before. Or bullet. Um, or wolf, your name on it. Yeah, this card, it doesn't need a lot of breakdown. It's insanely powerful. Um, you get to fatigue, play silver bullet into the afterlife, and then choose whether target dark or spirit beastie goes directly into the afterlife or any beastie gets fatigued, which means that this spell is never a waste in your hand. Like every time this is in your hand, you're like, cool. Even if there's no dark or spirit beasties doesn't out. doesn't matter. Cool. I'm just going to fatigue target beastie for one light aura, which is crazy. The other thing with silver bullet, you can have 10, 10 so of them. Back to your point, like maybe ten. light aura spell books aren't the best yet, but when you consider that you only need 40 cards in a spell book and one fourth of them could all be silver bullets mm -hmm. and then the other maybe 10 or 15 are aura, you really only need 10 or 15 cards in there to make up a fully functioning spell book. But I know what right. you're saying. It's right. not as lethal yet. It will be. No, it needs, it needs some cards to fill it out. Let's um, move on to the next card, which is my favorite among all these. Growth. Growth is your favorite. And it's, it's gross to me that he has two growths and I have no growths because I need it. And yeah, Booster I think that's growth is just so obviously my style god again the foil i mean whose style isn't it right okay. you pay two forest are you bookmark five pages if there is a plant within arm's reach of the arena bookmark five pages from the top of your spell book right we're gonna need to figure that out right and keep in mind cards trigger other cards fourth wall effects if there's a plant on a card if there's a picture of a plant if you have a plant on your shirt all of these things potentially trigger growth or they do they do actually they yes. do yeah. um but there may be a limit we've heard of only bringing four effects to the table we've heard things like this and it'll be a different meta at each shop <laughs> at each tournament at each kitchen table that was one shop who said this is how i do it you yeah. can bring four things to the table other shops no limits yet we'll metazoo see. hasn't placed any official limits yep. yet though other they did say that chances are in sanctioned tournaments fourth wall effects will be um either completely like null or they will have a list of specific fourth wall effects that are allowed at this tournament. And then the rest are like pff, gone. Yeah. Like they'll have the fourth wall set up for you already. Mm -hmm. You come into their world. You don't need to bring your own um, or they'll tell you, you can bring a certain number. So with this, there has never been a better time to invest in the green movement and invest. What is this card? Is this like a $50 card right now? I don't, I haven't checked in a while. I um, think it is. Cause it was know. like out of my range. I try not to spend over $5 a card right now building my spell books, which is pretty oh, difficult. If you want stuff like growth and uh death yeah. game and Phoenix rain. I mean, go ahead. You go through a couple now. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm not touching death beam. That's all you let's move on to death beam. Uh, death beam is probably what I think is the most playable I mean, Silver Bullet's really good too, but uh, Death Beam is just so clean. It's three dark aura. You can have four per spell book. Target Beastie is destroyed, period. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? And place... it's got all this dark power with other cards. Like, right. you can and then you place the destroyed Beastie into the afterlife. Instead of Limbo or the Cemetery, after resolving this page, you can no longer contract light pages for the rest of the game. That's nuts. Yeah. So you are, you have chosen the path of darkness <laughs> right, when you play dark beam, which is amazing. Um, the and the fact that the beastie side. goes into the afterlife, 
just like Silver Bullet. I know that may seem like a common effect because we just read it twice on two cards. Those are literally like the only two cards I can think of right That's now obnoxious. that have that effect. It is obnoxious. Huh? Obnoxious nine. All right, let me show that. Because oh. here's the thing. When a beastie is in your limbo, you can get it back. There's so many ways to get a beastie back from your limbo. When a beastie is sent to the afterlife, which is normally reserved for Terra and Aura cards that get destroyed, you are not getting that beastie back. We haven't, they haven't created a way to get things back from the afterlife yet. So damn, man, this is so powerful. And you're right. You really have to choose the light mm -hmm. or the dark, mm -hmm. a blast of power from the grim reaper stolen and written into flesh so that it may be used by other casters. Nice. And look at, look at what's doing. It's basically destroying the growth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now my, uh, my, my personal favorite that I have in use right now, Phoenix Rain. Here it is. This is my whole library or my whole spell book, pretty much based around. We'll get into it. Spell Phoenix Rain 2 per spell book. Three flame deal 100 damage to all casters. All non flame beasties and non flame water beasties in the arena are inflicted with berm. From the ashes come more ashes. And this Phoenix is multiplying. And it's losing control. You better, better shake up. Because I need a man. <laughs> I need Phoenix Rain. Something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, that's the one that I like the most right now that I'm actually using. It's the only one that I actually have uh, because it's... I have bought it. I bought two. I had to. And that was way over my $5 limit. I paid, I think, 20 per. But I needed it. It's First of all, the art is so insane. That's what first drew me to the card. I was like, whoa, I'm going to play this, and I don't even care what it does. It's just so cool. Um, for me... The 100 damage to each caster, that, that's pretty cool. 100 damage to all casters, it's, it's all right. It's, it looks big. It looks like a lot of damage. It's okay. I think the flame, the burning, all non-fire, non-water beasties is actually way stronger than the actual 100 damage. Because burning all those beasties, you get to roll a dice and you see how many burn counters each of those beasties get, which means that phoenix rain might just deal a hundred some damage to every single beastie if they get a bad roll on their burn counters um <clears throat> so phoenix rain i think is really powerful but it kind of sucks that you can't can't light fire beasties or water beasties aflame because oh. i've already played it and been like oh yeah that happened to us nobody's gonna get hurt except me yeah. and him yeah. yeah he played this spell book and mm -hmm. it's all water and flame you're telling me burn is a die roll yeah. Every time. Yeah. To see how many burn counters the every creature gets. Every time. Every time. That's not just. Well, define what you mean by every time. Anytime anything's burned, you roll a die roll, and that's how many turns. To see how many burn counters. A six it sided takes. die. So it could be yeah. up to six burns. Mm -hmm. So six turns with burns or mm -hmm. six attacks? Six attacks. It but you remove a burn counter. I'll double check this in the new rule book. I believe they also have it that you remove a burn counter at the beat. Get the end of the turn, well, maybe. You know that because that makes sense. So the yeah. burn does wear off if I wait the six rounds. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll look into that. Uh, and now, the next. If we're ready to move on, I'm going to take it out of its case. Okay. Wouldn't normally do this, but the case has a little mark on it, and I want to show this thing in its full glory. I marked the case with a P because this guy unfortunately has a rough print line on him, it's which means that I'm going to. Um, you can't really see it. It's at the top. It's like stars like get cut off into other star prints. So, mm -hmm. but regardless, still completely functional. Yeah, Absolutely. this is probably my favorite. The most terrifying card he has right now. I don't want to see this in yeah. the arena at yeah. all. Ever. See, I think he he wants like he would say it's his favorite, but he's actually so terrified of it. I can't afford what this it's card. Do and I don't trust. I'm not opening my sealed booster box. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, uh, it's. So he here's the here's the thing. He didn't buy this. Here's the thing with power up red guys. Um, you can only have one per spell book. Okay, of course it's too strong. It only costs three neutral aura. It doesn't matter what color. It's you can so... play this in every <sighs> single deck. Every single deck can have a power up red, and there's no reason not to because here's what it does. Place power up red under target beastie. While power up red is under a beastie, the beastie it is under loses and cannot gain immortal, which we'll talk about that in a second. 
it gains 100 life points and its attack gains 100 damage. If the beastie power up red is under, would leave the arena, place power up red in the cemetery. So it essentially acts like an enchantment in magic. You attach this thing on to your beastie and it gives him 100 life points and 100 attack. The only thing it takes is immortal. So for instance, with Chibi Mothman, who is a tiny little immortal creature. And what immortal means is that when his life points are reduced to zero, he doesn't die. He just stays there. He can't really block much. You know, he can't block anything actually, because he has zero life points to absorb damage, but he doesn't go away. He just hangs out and waits to trigger on Mothman's effect. Um, but if you place this on Chibi Mothman, he will lose immortal. But at the exact same time he loses immortal, he will gain a hundred life and a hundred damage. So your little chibi mothman becomes a hundred hundred creature. And that is chibi mothman, right? Um, it's definitely mothman. I don't think it's chibi. Chibi mothman is a much different like creature design. He doesn't look okay. quite the same as okay. mothman. Unlimited power! And that's because if you look at power up blue, it says somewhat limited <laughs> yeah, power. Somewhat <laughs> limited power. It's just like Bigfoot, just like I'm a little bigger. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. All right. And then finally... And then finally, we've got Ghost Train. One of the most magical, just beautiful, everything about this card I love. I mean, it's the only full. It's the best hollows. I think it's the, the only in the set. full full, right? Well, like the head the head of the train is not, um, is a sticker. You can see what? the head of the train. Wait, but you have a star on the head of your train. I have a star in the eye because oh. the eye is also, but just the head is like the skull of the no, head. You're right. You're is right. its own thing. It's almost like the outline, like the back. Because mm-hmm. where the light is coming out, you still have stars. Right. It's, it's tricky to see there, guys. But, yep, the white of the head is non-hollow. Everything else is covered in sparkles. It's crazy. Wow, let's read it. Artifact, Ghost Train, one per spell book. It has, it's a spirit, right? Mm-hmm. So that means it can't be targeted. By attacks. By attacks. But right. it can still be targeted by spells. Yes. Two neutral, three spirit. Whenever a beastie or beasties you control will be placed into the afterlife, you may make train sounds. Woo! Choo-choo train noises. <laughs> to place that beastie or beasties face under, face up under ghost train. You may fatigue this page at any time to choose one face up beastie under ghost train and place it in the arena awakened and under your control. I mean, come on. That's what? amazing. Yeah. It's the chosen so amazing. beastie is now a spirit beastie instead of its original aura. Place the chosen beastie into your cemetery at the end of this turn. All right, so it's temporary, but it mm-hmm. comes out on fatigue, so it can mm-hmm. attack, it can block. It can, it can, no, it's not even going to make the block because it's on your turn. Right. So this is just like an attack mechanism or something you can do in the moment with this beastie you've just saved from going to the afterlife. Yep. It's here, it's back, it's now a spirit, and you can do what you do, yep. but only until the end of your turn because it's placed in the cemetery. When right. Ghost Train leaves the arena, <clears throat> place all face-up pages under it into the afterlife. Any face-up pages underneath Ghost, Tra- Ghost Train are not considered to be in the arena and cannot be selected as a target. Okay, so this is interesting. This means that Ghost Train can literally have a stack of beasties underneath him mm-hmm. because all of them are going under Ghost Train. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's picking them all up. <laughs> yep. And then at any time you want, as long as Ghost Train's there and he's got a stack underneath them, you can just start popping out as many as you want. As long as you can. You have to fatigue him. You have up so one at a time. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but right. still, but still, you That's get still an powerful. extra shot with any of the creatures that have died. You get to pull them back out wow. for a turn and do whatever you can do with them. Like in the decks that I play, man, to be able to pull Charman back out and have some lightning in the bottles and take some big swings would be great. Um, but that's, I'd need to sprinkle spirit into the deck. And right now that's, it's not working. I already tried that and it was a little slow, but ghost train is amazing. And interesting to note, it's an artifact. It's not a beastie. Mm, it doesn't have point. attack. It's yeah. No, it's, it's just an a artifact. mechanic. It's just mm-hmm. a mechanic. But right it's now. a spirit artifact. So it's an artifact that can't be the target of an attack. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. You're right. So how much life does it have? A hundred. That's pretty powerful. So he's hanging out. He's collecting he's beasties. Out. And anytime you yep. need, they're bouncing back in for at least your turn. Yep. Let's get into the mechanics of our own spell books. Well, you cool. set up Clear the Obnoxious Nine. Uh, Fung, thanks for uh, recommending that. And any others, just let us know. I and hope that helped answer your questions. Yeah. Also, I don't even think we said it. The Obnoxious Nine only come in full hollow. There is no reverse hollow. There is also no non-hollow. It is only full hollow for all these crazy, crazy fools right here. Yep. Yep. Um, 
and they are powerful. After reading through them like that, I am convinced. Mm-hmm. I hadn't taken the time, really. I mean, I passed them. I know they're out there. But after lining them all up like that, that is, uh, that's gross that you have them all. <laughs> you have them all. It's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here was my plan with the current spell book you guys have seen me play. I wanted to deal 850 direct damage as fast as possible and then leave the 